Hey guys, and welcome back to sixth grade history and social studies, understanding us. Uh, my name is Miss Burrows, and I am a history teacher at Luso Brown Middle School, and I'm pumped to be joining this community of online learning. Um, this week, we are going to be learning about the Founding Fathers and Federalism. I want to take a second and just kind of check in with how you're feeling. Um, are you getting enough sleep? Are you like me and probably getting too much sleep? Um, are you feeling good? Are you feeling kind of down? If you need a minute, take it. Um, but if not, let's keep moving. Today you're going to need a piece of paper and either a pen or pencil. If you have a notebook, that's fine too. And now we're going to see what's going on. So um, first we're going to kind of just talk about what our goals are for today's lesson. Then we're going to go over our three words of the day. Um, then we're going to learn about the actual um, Federalist versus Anti-Federalist kind of debate. And then you'll learn what your mission is for today. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define federalism and then compare and contrast historical perspectives of the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. All right, now, this looks like a lot, so if you need to pause, take a minute and do that. Um, but here are your three words of the day. The first one, and probably the most important, is federalism. Federalism is a system of government in which entities such as states or provinces share power with a national government. So what that means is that the states do have some um, autonomy, they get to make some decisions, um, but then at the top is the federal government. Um, so just like right now, the governor gets to make some decisions and the president gets to make some decisions. Um, but ultimately the states kind of look towards um, the federal government or the president to make decisions. The constitution, um, some of you may have gotten to this in your classes, you may have not, that's totally fine. Um, the Constitution is what replaces the Articles of Confederation, and it is the document that we still have today. Um, it is a document that establishes the basic rules and laws of the American government. Ratification is the action of signing a treaty, contract, or agreement, making it officially valid. And today we're going to be talking about how the Constitution was ratified and kind of what the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists had to do with that. So now um, I'm going to give you the Federalist versus Anti-Federalist T. So in 1787, all of the Founding Fathers are getting together at something called the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. And basically they all kind of agree that the Articles of Confederation is not the best, um, but they end up kind of splitting into two different ways of thinking about how to move forward with um, how to run the United States of America. So the Federalists are people like Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. And these guys are pretty um, gung-ho about having federalism in the United States. They write a bunch of essays, like a lot of essays, um, and they kind of put together their argument that the federal government of the United States needs to be strong, and then the states can kind of um, have their own ideas within that, but that the big dog is basically the federal government. The Anti-Federalists were people like uh, George Mason, Patrick Henry, and Samuel Adams, and they were really scared that if the federal government had too much power, that it would kind of turn into the king situation. Um, and so they really wanted the states to have all the power, and so they kind of went back and forth with the Federalists. Um, before I tell you how this kind of ends, I want us to look at this map so that we can kind of get an understanding of what it looks like at this time. Um, if you'd like, you can go ahead and pause now or you can just keep going. Um, what I want you to do is to look at the map, take a second to notice the map key here down here at the bottom right, notice the different colors, um, and then I want you to just kind of list some things on your piece of paper that you notice about the map. Then I want you to go through some questions you have about the map, and then finally some conclusions you can make from looking at this map. When you're finished doing that, you can come back on. 
I'm going to keep going. So something I notice when I look at this map is the different colors. Um, and so I'm going to go to my key and I'm going to see that blue um, would be people with, or would be Federalist majorities, meaning most of those people wanted to ratify the Constitution, which if we go back to our word, ratify basically means to pass. Um, the orangey, yellowy color um, are anti-federalist majority, meaning majority of people in that area were against passing the Constitution, um, meaning they were probably on George Mason, Patrick Henry, and Samuel Adams' side. Um, and some questions I have when I look is what's going on with this um, light peach type color? Um, and again, if I look at my key, um, this is an unsettled or politically unorganized, meaning these areas weren't, weren't really settled yet, meaning they weren't like official areas. Okay. Um, so from looking at this map, I know um, as a history teacher that the Constitution gets ratified because it's what we have now. So I know who won this argument, which are the Federalists. But I think it's still important to look at the distribution. Um, and if you notice, although we know blue won, right, the Federalists won, the orange areas are mostly concentrated in the south areas um, and very spread out, and then this pocket in New York. Um, so we might be able to make a conclusion that maybe a lot of anti-Federalists were concentrated in the south, um, but as far as the evenly divided or the unsettled territories, we probably need some more information. Okay, now I want you to take your piece of paper out and draw a chart that looks something like this. Um, this is called a T-chart. You can kind of um, just pause if you need to and just fill in your chart as we go. At the top, you're going to put a side for Federalists and a side for Anti-Federalists. Now, these are the different arguments for each side. While you're writing them, I'm going to go through them and add a little bit more information. So the Federalists, we know, um, supported a strong national government. They wanted the federal government to have the power, and they supported the Constitution. The Anti-Federalists feared a strong national government. They wanted the states to have the power, and they opposed the Constitution until the Bill of Rights was created. Now, um, we will probably get to the Bill of Rights a little bit more at some other time, but basically it's a list of things that you have as an American citizen that really can't be taken away from you, some freedoms and things like that. So um, adding that to the Constitution did help some anti-federalists feel more comfortable with it and um, led to the the overall ratification of it um, because they felt like as long as those freedoms were promised then maybe the federal government wouldn't get too powerful which was their fear in the first place. So go ahead take a minute um, to fill out your chart so that you have these key differences and then we will get to today's mission. All right so you're going to keep this anti-federalist and federalist debate in mind as you complete today's mission. I want you thinking about how this connects to your life now. So think about a time when you disagreed with a decision that your parents or teacher made for you. In three to five sentences, write down your answer to the questions below. So, just to add before I keep going, you just want to think of a time where maybe mom, dad, aunt, grandma, teacher, coach, someone made a decision for you and you didn't like it. I'm sure you can have plenty of opportunities to come up with examples for that. Um, and I want you to, in your three, three to five sentences, answer what was the decision that they made um, did the decision affect just you or most of your siblings and classmates? So did it feel like it was only going to bother you or did it seem like most of your siblings or classmates or family members disagreed with the decision as well? And then finally, if you could have made the decision instead of your parent or teacher, what do you think would be the outcome? 
I want you to go back to your chart as you're answering this and kind of look at what side of the chart you think your argument could be that you would disagree with something that your parent or teacher is asking you to do. If you look back, um, you'll probably get a feeling that you are kind of acting like an anti-federalist because you are going against what the federal government wants for you. You feel like they're not looking out for your best interests and you feel like you have enough autonomy to make your own decisions. Um, this will be today's mission and on Thursday, you will be kind of flipping the script and acting as a federalist. That is all for today. Um, there will not be a video for Thursday. Like I said, the mission will be up um, on RPS at home. I cannot wait to see you next week. And remember that there ain't no party like a Federalist party. Bye.